And we're going to get straight into this reading. Okay. So you have the Six of Swords. Alongside the Ten of Pentacles. Alongside the Eight of Wands. It's suggesting a time of abundance is near. It suggests that not only yourself, but spirit, the universe, God, the higher power, your spirit team has been working with you to manifest this abundance. There's a joyous time for the family, a peaceful time for the family. I also just heard peaceful resolutions with the Ten of Pentacles. But there's also a sense of being protected and guided and looked after by spirit. There's a sense of life, of birth, of creation. There's love in the air. But there's also a sense of growth, growth in knowledge and growth in wisdom. All this to say that the times that you're heading into are those of more fruitful grass with the eight of wands. With the five of pentacles coming out, this is letting you know that although there may have been hard times, although there may have been struggles, although there may have been negative moments in life, that you're going to reap the reward and you are going to basically your hard work isn't gone unnoticed and although the weather, although the conditions do not look suitable to grow these pentacles, to grow these fruits, these pentacles are still growing, these pentacles are still healthy, these pentacles are being manifested and they're going to be handed down to you when they are ready to be harvested. The Knight of Cups. This for me is the messenger card, a message coming forward, something being given to you. But with this coming out with these four cards ahead of it, it suggests again that this thing that is being given, this thing that is coming, this thing that is being presented is the manifestation, whatever it is that you've been working on. This manifestation does have something to do with like currency. I feel that whatever the manifestation is, there's going to be the ability to accumulate, accumulate finances from it. There's a transformation happening, transformation occurring that has been happening because you've been in the chrysalis for some time. With the Five of Swords, all the swords point to this moth, to you. This moth is undergoing transformation. This moth has recently been given its wings and again is being guided by all these other fairies or spirit guides. But it suggests that the work has now been left down to the moth because the moth has now been anointed. The moth has now been left to go on its journey. You have the six of wands, the seven of swords, and the ten of cups. The six of wands is the card for me that suggests the incoming or the closing of a cycle or the closing and the incoming of a new cycle. This is really reflecting this transformation. The Seven of Swords is saying that there is a new journey ahead and this person is actively going on this journey. They're not shying away from it. They're collecting their swords. They're collecting all the lessons that they've learned so that they can take them on this new journey with them. The Ten of Cups has come out. Again, Reflecting the Ten of Pentacles, this joyous time within the family, these playful and happy moments. Love again is in the air. It's almost that there is no want in this energy because we are fulfilled. Ten of Wands, heading to higher grounds. This is suggesting that we're heading to higher grounds solo that we've been working on getting to this higher ground, this castle in the sky, in the mountains, alone. The 
that all the struggle, all the work has been left on our shoulders. But we're strong and we're continuing to march forward to this higher ground. At the bottom of the deck, we have the Seven of Pentacles. Patience. It feels that like you've been patient, but it still feels that more patience is required. Three of Wands, Seven of Wands, Eight of Cups. We're going to put this one here. Three of Wands, again, reflecting another card in this spread already. The Ten of Wands, going solo. This card is suggesting that you're waiting for your, your transportation. Maybe waiting for the next step, to be told the next step. To be given a sense of direction of where to go or how to get from a to b but we're looking out looking out towards our future i want to say and there is a sense of freedom and there's a sense of accomplishment and there's also a sense of having strength in being solo the seven of wands having strength in being solo usually when i pull this card out you see this individual, he has his wand or weapon or sword or whatever you want to call it, his stick. It has these flowers on it and you see he's pointing it towards all these other sticks, weapons, wands that are pointing at him. So it's almost that he's a sole individual fighting all these other individuals, but these individuals are also, I want to say, alike. They are like him. They have the same sticks with the same flowers on it. So there's a sense of maybe envy or jealousy that people may have for you. Or a sense of envy or jealousy that people may build for you. It's that they see your potential and know that that potential that you have is in them too. But you somehow are able to benefit from it or use it to your advantage if that makes sense okay great advice the ace of wands this card has come out almost like a piece of advice for how we handle the energies surrounding this card this card is all about for me as a reader you see these oh i didn't even notice that you see how it's another stick with similar flowers on it do you see how this card has these two reins coming off it? These two reins represent elements of self, parts of our personality that are a bit overbearing for others that we may need to pull back into ourselves. And it's not about making others feel comfortable, but sometimes our energy cannot be received when we are being a bit overbearing, if that makes sense, or when we are not being conscious of our surroundings. Sometimes we have to assimilate to our surroundings in order for our message or for our self to be received, if that makes sense. And it's not about dimming our light. Again, it's about adjusting so that we can shine even brighter. Okay, so we're gonna pull two or three more cards and leave the reading here. We have the Queen of Wands. A fiery feminine energy it's almost that she is so strong in her feminine energy that she becomes masculine so confident in her being that she just exudes this sexual energy but it's not even a intention for anything sexual it's just that power that she holds within herself and it's funny because i'm saying um elements of self to rein ourselves in but she, you see how she's holding the wand proudly allowing her rings to roam freely hmm. so maybe there's a sense of okay yes see she's just sat there confident in her beingness and just her being sat there in her beingness exudes all this power and light and confidence she doesn't have to speak or say anything 
because her energy is felt. Felt. Queen of Wands. Divine Feminine. Wow. King of Wands has come out next. With the same wand. Same reins coming off it. Another message to confirm a message that we've already had. With these two cards also coming out in conjunction, it does suggest a, um, a divine union. Most definitely with the Ace of Cups at the bottom of the deck. A sacred union between a masculine and a feminine. Remember at the beginning of the reading we were talking about the Ten of Cups and the Ten of Pentacles and this happy joyous time within the family. And now we have the Queen of Wands and the Knight of the King of Wands. Really both of them are saying be confident in your beingness. When you're confident in your beingness, you don't over ex exaggerate your beingness. You don't you don't over exaggerate your qualities when you are confident in who you are as a being. You just let yourself shine for who you are in each moment. Oh, sorry. I don't know if I was too far over here. We have the Knight of Swords. This card represents leadership. Yellow represents leadership. Represents power and the sun and light. Charging forward with confidence. Being confident in our light, being confident in who we are. The final message is really just about being confident in self. I'm hearing honouring the self. To honour yourself is to let yourself be visible for who you truly are. Without the facades, without you expressing yourself in how you want people to perceive you without you expressing yourself in ways because you feel people should see you in certain ways. It's just about being confident, accepting yourself for who you are, allowing that self to shine so that people can also accept that self. These messages have come from Naptali and the Witch's Tarot. I thank you for being present with me. Peace and love. Ashe.